it's very interesting that, you know, there were how many people, according to Bible scholars, 15 million people were in the whole province of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, and what happened? All of them heard about Jesus in only a matter of two years. How can 15 million hear about Jesus? Definitely, this was not just the Apostle Paul. But Acts 19 has the mention of the school of Tyrannus, where I really believe that believers were trained and equipped to be multipliers. So every believer should be doing the ministry as a royal priest, right? Every believer is a royal priest, every believer is a minister, therefore every disciple, uh, every believer should be making disciples, and disciple making disciples. Every believer is, you know, who are leaders, are reproducing leaders, mm -hmm. and you are seeing churches planted reproducing churches. Yes. And then for 14, 15 generations, no? So, we, we want to see that as you go to the mission field that you will really impact lives. Yeah. You, you just don't want to see 100 people come to Christ through ministry. You want to see a lot, not just 100 people, but maybe 100 churches. And it can happen if we start it right. Mm -hmm. The biblical way, the bi using biblical principle. Because in the New Testament, we have seen that happen. The whole Roman Empire, the, the Christian, Christian influence, and here we see in the New Testament how the church has grown, how, how this uh, happened in the province of Asia. But it's all because God's people have been involved. Mm -hmm. So, prison of all believers, every believer is a minister. That's very important. But let me talk about disciple making movement. Uh, earlier it mentioned about church planting movement where churches are planting churches. Disciple making movement is basically disciples making disciples. Now, if you look at the scriptures, you can never see the commander to go and plant churches. Now, I have not found one yet. I'm trying to look up my Bible, but what I found is go and make disciples. Go and, and share the gospel. In other words, all our evangelism, all our disciple making should lead to church plans. If our, our evangelism in, in making disciples uh, will not lead to church plans or at least lead up to our church growing, something is wrong. Because if you are part of the church, then your church should grow as you evangelize and you make disciples. Or if you evangelize and make disciples, if, if they will not be part of the mother church, then they can, you can start another church. So again, it will result in church growth or churches planted. All evangelism and disciples. That should be our goal. Because oftentimes we just evangelize and we make disciples, and we never intend to bring them to our church, or we never intend to start a church among them. So it should always lead to that. Okay? So once you do that, then uh, you will be amazed. So what is disciple making movement? It is when God uses ordinary people to start a kingdom movement among a people, city, or region. Simple biblical strategies. Every disciple is making disciples. Every church is planting churches. Every leader is reproducing leaders. And I would like to add, it reaches a moment when it is consistently happening for generations. 4G. You know, when our signal with the internet or, or cell phone is 4G, we are so happy. 3G, oh, a bit disappointed, very slow, no? Uh, in Korea, when we were there last time, it's 5G. Oh, yeah. Is that real 5G? <laughs> That's what they said. But it's really fast. You know, we were taking pictures, and just in the tourist bus we were, you we don't even you don't need to go down. Just in the bus, you will be surprised. You said it in there. You know, we were we were moving. Here, when you you walk with the bus, uh, no more signal. But there is it is so fast. It's so fast. Well, once you are when the, there are signals, click, send, yes. and then. Before you are even part, it's you know it's already said. Oh, we were so happy and so we don't we don't uh, you know uh, waste time uh, uh, you know sending pictures of dating. But 4G or 5G. Five yeah, they said 5G. So anyway, even 4G alone in our 
ministry will be very good enough. Because, uh, because the problem always is this. A, a pastor is discipling somebody. Or a disciple is discipling somebody. But oftentimes, it's, it ends there. No? But again, every disciple should be making disciples. So if I make disciples, my disciples should be making disciples, if they are real disciples. And the disciples of your disciples should be making disciples. In other words, your goal always is to make sure we have four generations. Because they said first, second generation is, is difficult. More difficult to start the third generation. And even more difficult to start the fourth generation. But once it hits the fourth and beyond, it's unstoppable. Because it's already the norm, it's already the practice, it's already what is being seen. So everybody sees that happening, so everybody will do the same thing. So that should be your goal. If I disciple you, you need to make, I will need to make sure that you're, you have the capacity to disciple another person. And I will make sure that your disciple will also be able to disciple somebody. And I will make sure that as I disciple you, your disciple will also be able to disciple somebody. Who will disciple somebody? Four generations. So I look at four generations. If it's not happening in four generations, I should not stop. I need to continue to bombard you, teach you, make sure, okay? And then you do the same, four generations. You do the same, four generations, okay? Everybody will do that, then it becomes a movement. So the what that happened in India, 40, 15 generations already. But just imagine the multiplication, 80,000 home fellowships, 4 million baptized members. If you divide, uh, 4 million divided by 80,000, how many, how many members average in one church? Wow. Two hundred? One hundred? Four million divided by eighty thousand. Fifty? Huh? One hundred? No? Four million. Four. Huh? <laughs> now I'm also confused. Four million. One, okay, four, four million divided by 80,000. Okay. Fifty. Oh, yeah, so fifty. Per, per, per home fellowship. That's not a small church, huh? Yeah. <laughs> fifty is not a, that's an average Filipino church, actually. Yes. So that's not small. Because you may be thinking oh, maybe only five people, maybe only 20 people. So it gives us 80,000 fellowships, 4 million, of an average of 50. Can that happen? Yeah. It happened already. In, in, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it should be happening even more. Okay, so these are some reports, no? So in 20 years, a disciple-making movement among local spirit people resulted in more than 80,000 non-fellowships and 4 million new believers. In another area, Madhra Pradesh produced 4,000 new churches in 7 years. In 7 years. Of course, after Mongolia, uh, and then Africa, uh, just go to the middle. In 7 years, over 7,000 churches planted in the Horn of Africa. Uh, in this uh, yeah, West African country, you know, work of a Muslim group that remained almost fruitless after 100 years. After learning about disciple making movement and methodology, they have seen over 2,000 churches planted and now an average new church each day. So, today, after years of resistance to the gospel in the last 10 years, some 90,000 of Kenya's, um, uh, I don't know how they pronounce it, Maasai. 600,000 have, have become followers of the Lord Jesus. So 90,000 of 600,000 became followers of the Lord Jesus. So in China, uh, that's what I was saying earlier, in Henan province grew from one to five million in only eight years. Chinese Christians in uh, another country, in another uh, province planted 236 churches in just one month. In Southern China, the disciple making movement produced more than one million baptized believers in 100,000 house churches in 12 years. So these are more uh, smaller, no? smaller churches. 
But just imagine in just uh, so it's happening in India among the Hindus, it's happening among the Buddhists and the atheists. That is really a part. I, I, I had the opportunity to meet the guy who is uh, helping uh, in the disciple making movement in the Middle East, and he was telling me in Jordan there was one taxi driver uh, that was used by the Lord that in just a matter of 18 months, 8,000 Jordanian Muslims were baptized. Mm -hmm. Just a taxi driver. You know, uh, this team, there was a team who went to Jordan. They said, God, we want to see a disciple making movement happen. But we'll be there for only seven days. So they went. They were praying, asking God for a personal peace, for, for the right people to contact. On the sixth day, nobody yet. So on the seventh day, they said, God, this is our last day. Please. <laughs> so when they took a taxi, they realized it was a taxi driver. Wow. He wants to know uh, a lot about Christ. And so he told the driver, I mean the, the, the team, can you teach me? And the team said, the problem is we're leaving tomorrow. Now is the last day. And the taxi driver said, if that's the case, I will not drive my taxi today. Just teach me everything you can teach me. One day training. In 18 months, 8,000 were baptized. Very simple. You know, he came to know the Lord, and then he was... Just those four questions in the video. What is the story telling us about that? What, you know, what is the story telling us about people? What do we ought to do? And who am I going to share or tell what I have learned? The only those four questions. So he, he learned that, and he will lead, uh, you know, if he, he, he talks to somebody, and uh, uh, a bit interested to, to learn about the Bible, so he would say, let's read Genesis 1, the creation. And then he'll say, what does the story tell us about that? What does the story tell us, you know, and then you'll go. We, we'll go to that this afternoon. But basically, those questions, those, and those passages of scriptures we will study this afternoon is what they use. So what happened in a matter of 18 months? Amazing. In Iran, same, same thing is happening. Over 2 million Muslim background believers. Meaning Muslims in beliefs and practices, but now are believers of the Lord, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Indonesia, I also had the opportunity to meet one of the prime movers of the disciple-making movement. And he was telling me, if the present trend of, in Indonesia of Muslims becoming followers of Christ will continue, he said in 30 years, the whole of Indonesia will become believers or Christ followers. God is doing amazing things in the world today. But we have to go back to the people.